and we're looking at improvements that we can make to the Smack Booster. And if you're wondering what the Smack Booster is, uh, take a look at YouTube user Electric Ride. Uh, if you want, also Google Smack Booster, Smack Booster PDF, and it'll get you to his website. He offers all the information for free. And if you want to get your hands wet with this HHO stuff and just kind of learn how this stuff works, give you some hands-on knowledge, the Smack Booster is a pretty, pretty good system and it's not that expensive. If you remember on the Smack Booster, we have the uh, straps that lead down to the cell itself. We're here, and what we're, I was using before was some really thin gauge steel, and it really just wasn't working out. Had some heat problems, as we saw in previous videos, and we changed that uh, by switching to a very heavier gauge metal, as you can see, and this has mitigated the heat problem. So if you're having heat problems, uh, with your terminal lugs or your straps or anything like that, maybe a heavier gauge uh, metal is something that you need to look into. If you notice here, we have, these aren't uh, switch plate covers, but these are 316L stainless steel plates that I ordered. Got them off of YouTube, uh, so you can take a look at those. And basically, they're spaced out. The distance in between each plate is approximately uh, one millimeter. And they're separated with uh, stainless steel cut washers along with nylon uh, washers. And I made a little addition to the Smack Booster in that uh, added two more plates to each side to basically make this a positive, four neutral, negative cell. And again, uh, I'm not that smart to figure that out, so I gotta give a shout out to D3 from the EBN guys. Uh, he's the guy that actually figured all that out, so shout out to him and all those uh, really smart people over there. So, thanks, appreciate it. If you notice the bottom strap, uh, I was using, again, that real thin material. And basically what you're supposed to do is drill a hole and then drill a hole and then you bend this and then you bend it around the cell and then bolt it down. The problem was, is again, we're finding out, or at least I'm finding out, that this real thin gauge metal isn't the way to go and it heats up and it traps heat. Uh, we want the, the voltage and the amperage to go through the cell instead of being bottlenecked and actually burning off heat and wasting that energy. So what I did on the Smack Booster here, uh, I used the same steel, the uh, high, uh, pretty thick steel, and instead of just drilling a hole, uh, what I did was drill a hole as you can see there, and then I cut a slot out of it so I could just take that uh, end strap and then just slide it over the cell and then, then I was able to bolt it on. And I did that with both sides. So anyway, that might be something to think about if you have a smack booster or you're doing some experiments and you're trying to figure out how to uh, put this stuff on there without having to take off nuts and bolts all the time because that 316 uh, threaded nylon rod yeah, those threads wear out, and instead of having to purchase nylon rods all the time, uh, that might be something you should consider doing. That's basically it for the improvements on the booster. Uh, to give you a heads up, I'm doing the video for the before mileage test on the 97 Ford Ranger. I'm about halfway through right now, and we're looking at using about a half a tank of gas and doing a series of runs and come up with just me going to work back and forth. Uh, and I don't use the truck for anything else, so we'll get a real good baseline as far as that. Throw it into the uh, 97 Ford Ranger and then do some after mileage tests. So anyway, that's what we got on the board and the improvements that we made. And if you've got some videos or some information, hey, post it up on YouTube and share the information. Catch you later. Peace.